don't even know where to start. To be honest with you, my my life is a long history of narcissism and narcissistic people. Um, the last twenty five years, especially, uh, have been the worst. Have have brought me to a place in my life where I sold my home, gave up everything, and I'm living in this little studio apartment. Um, it took for my nose and rib to be broken and to be literally um, left outside hiding in the woods by a tree for 17 hours while my abuser hid my car after he beat me in the garage. No one knew where I was. And it was 17 hours later that I heard a, 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 a person, a friend of mine, her voice, um, she went to my door. I was watching her dog and she hadn't heard from me and knew something was wrong. She stopped and I heard her having a conversation. These were the words, the woods by my home at the time. And I heard her having a conversation with him, like, where's Susie? And he's like, oh, whatever, you know, always a smear campaign. She did this. She did that. She's probably with a boyfriend, you know, all this craziness. And I remember sitting by that tree and I was huddled. And I was bleeding, I was bruised, I was hurt, I was in shock. I didn't move for 17 hours. I ran, I heard her voice. It took every ounce of strength in me to run towards her voice. That's what I did. I just got up and ran and I dove through her window. The window of her car was open and she just looked at me because my eye was all swollen and badly black and blue and just said, what? the F happened to you. Like she could, she had no word. She was in shock. And he looked at me and he's like, I didn't do that to you. He just started screaming. So I, she gets in the car. I'm like, get in the car, get in the car. And I'm shaking. And I just said, go. I just started screaming, go. I just wanted out of there. So while we were there, um, my phone was on the side of the road because I had pulled up in my, in my car and he had come over to the, we weren't, we were having an argument. I wasn't staying there. It was always an argument. I'd always have to leave my home. So this was one of those times. And I had pulled up in front of my home and he was outside putting the garbage pails out and kind of stopped me. So I stopped the car and he came over to the driver's side, opened the door, pulled me out and just started beating me. I was able to hit the record button on my phone and I got about 45 seconds of him beating me. Um, if I didn't have the recording, I don't know what would have happened because after he saw me and after I dove through that window of the car and she took off with me trying to take me to the hospital, but I never reported anything he did to me. I never went to the hospital. I kept everything a secret. I covered it up. I never told the police. I took the blame for everything. Um, he started screaming. I didn't do that to you. So as we were driving down the road, to the hospital, she, which I didn't go into, I made her take me to her home. He was on his way to the police station and he went into the police station and said that I, I guess he saw me and I beat myself up and I did it to myself and I was going to blame him. So I would have never went to the police. I never did before I abused 25 years and I was abused with this man. And I was abused before that I was I have a long history in my childhood of all kinds of abuse, um, which I now understand is why I attracted this type of person or tolerated this kind of horrible behavior. And she took me to her home. And honestly, I've been up here in Connecticut. I'm from New York originally for 22 years, 23 years. I met this woman because her son and daughter went to school with my children. And over the years, when I would be beaten up, I would go because she lived in the woods in a log cabin and I would go hide out for a couple of days after the beatings. Um, I She brought me home to her home and it was in our routine. You know, this time was worse than ever, clearly, because I was never bruised to that extent. I never had broken bones before. And she put me upstairs in the bed and she got a phone call. And she's like, Susie, it's the police department. I guess it came up on her, her phone and she's like, we were, she was confused. I was just shaking. I couldn't speak when these events would happen. These abuse, I don't know what you call them cycles that he would um, put me through. I would just shake, shut down, stare at the wall, regroup. Um, he would pretend nothing happened and we'd carry on like usual. 
Um, there was a knock at the door because she didn't pick up the phone and it was two police officers. So they asked if I was there. She said yes. She explained what happened, how she found me. Um, they came up to the bedroom, the little bedroom upstairs, and I was laying in the bed. I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I still couldn't speak. And she's like, this is, this is nothing new. This isn't the first rodeo. I, she's, I've known her all these years. This is what happens. I just, you're not going to, she's not going to talk. I know Susie. I just let her ride it out. So they looked at me and they, they were questioning me. Like, did I do this to myself? And the woman whose home I was in said, wait a minute. I have her phone. Cause in the car I had said, I hit the button. I don't know if I record anything. I didn't know anything. So my phone was dead. It was broken. Um, the police officer plugged it in. They charged it. And on that phone was him beating me, screaming, I'll call the effing police and tell them I beat you in the driveway as he was beating me. And at the end of the 45 seconds or whatever it was, was the horn because I was screaming for help as he dragged me out of the car. So my story, the timeline all coincided with her, her story and me saying he beat me up. So they called an ambulance immediately. Um, they said everything has changed. This we uh, It was a younger officer with an older officer. And he says, I'm literally in shock were his words. He says, I cannot believe this is the same man that walked into the police station. I'm getting goosebumps an hour before. Um, I, I can't believe it's the same person. And he was the first one. So the, we're waiting for the ambulance. They, I, I never knew any of this because I never went through. I never told the truth. I, I was always, you know, abused and shut my mouth. And he went through the list of, do you feel safe? Does this happen? Does that happen? And, and he called, he says, you need the women's center. You need a support group. He says, we're taking you to the hospital, but I am calling the support group because he's like you need to call them and I'm looking at him like I'm not calling anyone so the ambulance takes me he calls um, in Danbury here in Connecticut the center um, the support group for women um, and domestic violence sexual assault they, they cover everything and I went to the hospital and they did x-rays cat scans he broke my nose he broke my rib um, wow. the police, I'll never forget the police officer standing there. And he's like, I called for you because I know you're not going to call and they're going to begin getting in touch with you from the center. You need help. And the ER doctor who I've known over the years, like if the kids needed stitches or something, you know, I've seen her before. And she's like, Susie, please, you cannot allow this to continue. They went and arrested him. We had to wait. He had to wait for his warrant. They had to, you know, order his warrant. Um, spent the night in jail, I guess, was there in the morning. Um, had to find a way home. No joke. You know, he, he's a charmer. He, he can schmooze anyone and make it look like my fault. And I would always be the quiet one and just take the blame. And he was Mr. Prince Charming. And um, the Women's Center called me few days later and I started therapy with one of the women there he I he, we had an order of protection I had an order of protection um I got a phone call from a mutual friend at, uh, in the neighborhood and they said look can you come over Ronnie wants to talk to you so here we go with the love bomb